Today I will be talking about the protein called the mechanistic target of rapamycin, abbreviated as mTOR. mTOR is a highly conserved serine threonine kinase found in all eukaryotes. It's really interesting because it controls cellular growth and has been found to be a major player in cancer and aging processes. The discovery of mTOR's inhibitor caused the mTOR pathway to become a large topic of interest and research. The story of mTOR is linked back to a small place called Easter Island, or natively Rapa Niu, off the coast of Chile. Researchers were on the island collecting soil samples in hopes of finding bacteria for new antibiotics. They had brought soil samples from around the island and from underneath these famous headstones. Dr. Surin Sengal at Ayers Laboratories in Montreal was able to extract this bacteria Streptomyces hygroscopius from the soil, and he found that it was a potent antifungal arresting the fungi in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. Sengal named the compound produced by the bacteria Rapamycin after the island it was recovered from. Rapamycin's other powerful effects in our understanding of the mTOR pathway would have been lost when Ayers Labs closed their Montreal branch if Sengal hadn't recognized the importance of rapamycin. The lab was set to destroy all materials upon closing, but Sengal smuggled a few vials out of the lab and stored them in his personal kitchen freezer in a bag labeled Do Not Eat. Later experiments with rapamycin showed powerful and seemingly unrelated properties. Besides being antifungal, rapamycin was found to have anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties, act as an immunosuppressant, and cause a 10 to 20 percent lifespan extension in mice and a 50 percent lifespan extension in C. elegans. All of these properties were eventually linked back to the suppression of mTOR activity by rapamycin. So how does this suppression yield these beneficial effects? In a nutshell, mTOR signaling integrates information about nutrient availability to the cell. The availability of food sources, oxygen, and growth factors signals the cell to be in either an anabolic or catabolic state. This regulation basically controls cellular processes that require a lot of energy, like autophagy, translation, ribosomal biogenesis, lipid synthesis, and nucleotide synthesis. This in turn affects the growth of the cell. Another important role of mTOR is that when activated and promoting anabolic processes for cell growth, it suppresses the catabolic process of autophagy. Inside the cell, mTOR doesn't function as a lone protein. mTOR is actually the catalytic subunit of two distinct complexes, mTORC1 and mTORC2. mTORC1 is the master growth regulator that senses nutrients, growth factors, oxidative stress, insulin, and responds by promoting anabolic processes and repressing catabolic processes mTORC1 is suppressed by rapamycin. On the other hand, mTORC2 does not respond to rapamycin. mTORC2 promotes cellular survival, metabolism, and cell motility by control of the cytoskeleton. mTORC1, because it can be inhibited by rapamycin and cause major beneficial effects, is the more research of the two complexes. Therefore, we'll focus on mTORC1 and its activation. mTORC1 requires two kinds of signals to become activated. Firstly, amino acids and glucose signal the RAG dimers dock to the lysosome to change phosphorylation states via the regulator guanine nucleotide exchange protein. Secondly, oxygen energy and growth factors load a third GTPase REB with GTP. Now mTORC1 can be recruited to the lysosome to start signaling cell growth and repressing autophagy by recalling autophagosomes. Let's now take a closer look at mTOR to understand its structure and function. This is mTOR alone. There are four major domains in the protein. A 100 residue FRB domain made of four alpha helices. An MLST8 domain made of primarily beta strands. A fat domain made of 28 alpha helices and alpha alpha helical repeats which forms a C-shape that wraps around and clamps the kinase domain. And this is the 550 residue kinase domain. As you can see, it is a mixture of alpha helices and beta sheets. This part is referred to as the N lobe, and this part is the C lobe. This is mTOR uncomplexed. As you can see, it is mostly composed of alpha helices shown in green with some purple beta strands in the MLST8 and kinase domains. There is a 30 residue segment in the C lobe of the kinase domain where incoming polypeptides get phosphorylated. Aspartate 2338, shown here, orients and activates the substrate protein's hydroxyl group for nucleophilic attack. There is also a histidine 2340 that interacts with substrate hydroxyl groups and the gamma phosphate of ATP, which stabilizes accumulation of charge of the transition state. The protein and active site 
form this V-shape with a deep cleft which restricts access to the substrate binding site and probably is involved in selective binding. Rapamycin inhibits the phosphorylation of mTOR by acting as an allosteric regulator. It forms a ternary complex with FKBP12, a binding protein, and then binds the FRB domain of mTOR. It's believed that this complex hugely restricts the already constricted catalytic domain of the protein. This is supported by experiments where mutations loosen the active site, causing mTOR hyperactivation and kinase activity. This animation shows the interaction between FKBP12, rapamycin, and FRB. The purple lines are hydrogen bonds, and there are many between both protein components and protein and rapamycin components. Now that we have a basic understanding of mTOR and mTORC1, we can examine the clinical benefits of decreasing mTOR activity. Because rapamycin reduces the phosphorylation of other proteins, it ultimately decreases translation. In fungi, this causes the arrest of the cell cycle in the G1 phase. Rapamycin is also used as an immunosuppressant in organ transplant procedures. Originally, it was thought that inhibiting mTOR reduced immune cell proliferation, but more recent data shows that mTOR actually responds to the microenvironment to influence the differentiation and maturation of B and T cells in complicated ways. mTOR is also found to be anti-cancerous, and other inhibitors of its activity are used in the treatment for some cancers. As we saw before, the proteins that relay the signals about nutrient availability are from tumor suppressor genes or are found to be hyperactive in several cancers, as seen in this diagram as green and red proteins. Because mTOR ultimately regulates all cell growth, it makes sense that problems at any point in the pathway causing hyperactivation lead to uncontrolled cell growth. In addition, mTOR signaling is also found to be hyperactive in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. mTOR signaling has been closely related to the presence of amyloid B and tau protein aggregates in neurons. Both physical and genetic removal of these plaques in mouse models has been shown to restore normal mTOR signaling. Overall, translational control and maintenance of protein homeostasis is essential for neural plasticity and is regulated by mTOR. mTOR mediated over and under expression has been shown to cause impaired learning and memory. These cognitive deficits are alleviated in the the presence of rapamycin. In addition, since mTOR is a negative regulator of autophagy, disruptions in autophagy reduce protein turnover, causing misfolded proteins and aggregate formation. Reducing mTOR activity and increasing autophagy increase clearance and of the harmful protein aggregate. New research is focusing on the fact that mTOR delays senescence in cells and increases longevity. Researchers are examining how mTOR inhibition can be used to treat diseases that are associated with senescence and age-related pathologies, including progeria. The exact mechanism of how mTOR suppression decreases senescence and increases longevity is still not 100% clear. There is evidence for decreased reactive oxygen species being involved. Regardless, mTOR inhibition has huge potential for alleviating deterioration associated with normal aging, as well as helping with aging due to diseases or other drug treatments. People are optimistic about it, especially since rapamycin inhibition of mTOR delivers a 50% increase in C. elegans longevity and increases the lifespan of mice by 10-20%. to 20%.